temporary and permanent changes. Substances undergo various changes when subjected to different conditions of temperature. To learn the various changes that substances undergo when subjected to different conditions of temperature, we shall observe these experiments. Experiment. What happens when different solids are heated? In the first experiment, zinc oxide is put in a test tube and heated until no further change occurs. Zinc oxide is a white powder that occurs naturally as a mineral. It is then allowed to cool and observations recorded. The process is repeated with wax and iodine. When zinc oxide is heated, its color changes from white to yellow. On cooling, the yellow solid changes to white. Wax melts on heating. When cooled, Liquid wax changes back to solid. When iodine is heated, the shiny black solid turns to a purple vapor. When cooled, the purple vapor changes back to a shiny black solid. Heating zinc oxide, wax and iodine does not result in the formation of a new substance. Cooling reverses the changes these substances undergo. A change which can easily be reversed and in which no new substance is formed is called a temporary physical change. Temporary physical changes have the following characteristics. They are easily reversible. No new substance is formed. The mass of the substance does not change. They are not accompanied by net heat change. Experiment. What happens when copper 2 sulfur crystals are heated? Let's observe this experiment on the effects of heat on copper 2 sulfur. Copper 2 sulfur is a blue solid chemical compound which appears as bright blue crystals or a blue powder. Copper 2 sulfur crystals are put in a dry boiling tube and apparatus set up as shown. The copper 2 sulfur is heated gently until there is no further change. The delivery tube is disconnected, heating continues for a while, and then the boiling tube is stoppered. It is then allowed to cool and observations are recorded. The solid is then divided into two portions which are then put into two separate test tubes. A thermometer is put into the first test tube and the temperature recorded. Two to three drops of water are added into the test tube using a dropper and the temperature of the resultant mixture is recorded. A thermometer is placed on the second portion and the temperature recorded. Two to three drops of the liquid collected during heating are added and the temperature of the resultant mixture is recorded. This experiment is repeated using cobalt-2 chloride crystals. Crystals of copper 2 sulfate contain water of crystallization. It is said to be hydrated. When heated, it decomposes to produce white copper 2 sulfate powder and water. The white copper 2 sulfate powder does not contain water of crystallization and it is said to be anhydrous. The white anhydrous copper 2 sulfur does not regain the original blue color on cooling. Similarly, pink cobalt 2 chloride decomposes to form blue anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride and water vapor. 
the blue cobalt 2 chloride does not regain the pink color on cooling. Decomposition of a substance when it is heated is referred to as thermal dissociation. Heat evolves when water is added to the anhydrous copper sulfate or the blue anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride. The anhydrous substance become hydrated and regain their original color. Heating hydrated copper 2 sulfate or hydrated cobalt 2 chloride results in a temporary chemical change. The characteristics of a temporary chemical change are A new substance is formed Heat energy is evolved or absorbed There is a change in mass The change can be reversed Experiment. What happens when copper 2 nitrate is heated? Let us observe this experiment on the effects of heat on copper 2 nitrate. Copper 2 nitrate is a blue crystalline solid that is highly soluble in water. In this experiment, a dry test tube is weighed. Copper 2 nitrate is added and again weighed and observations are recorded. The copper 2 nitrate crystals are heated gently and then strongly. The gas evolved is tested with a glowing splint. A glowing splint is a small wooden stick that has been partially burned or charred, and then extinguished, leaving a small glowing ember at the end. The product is allowed to cool and be weighed. This experiment is then repeated with potassium manganate 7, a dark purple crystalline solid that dissolves readily in water. When copper 2 nitrate is heated, it decomposes to form a black solid and a mixture of gases. The black solid is copper 2 oxide. The mixture of gases consists of a red-brown gas and another gas that relights a glowing splint. The red-brown gas is nitrogen 4 oxide, while the gas that relights the glowing splint is oxygen. The mass of copper 2 oxide is found to be less than that of copper 2 nitrate because the gaseous products escaped into the atmosphere. Potassium manganate 7 decomposes to form a black-green solid and a colorless gas, which relights a glowing splint. The black-green solid is a mixture of black manganese 4 oxide and green potassium manganate 6. The black-green solid weighs less than the original potassium manganate 7. The decomposition of copper 2 nitrate and potassium manganate 7 are examples of permanent chemical changes. Permanent chemical changes have the following characteristics. New substances are formed. The change is irreversible. The change is accompanied by a change in mass. Heat energy is released or absorbed. Thank you for watching this chemistry lesson. Please subscribe to this channel and other genius channels relevant to your level of study.